The Create Skin tool works very similar to the Bridge tool in Modeler. Uh, I thought what would be best is to kind of take a look at both uh, performing the same operation and then that way you could better decide which one would be the tool to use uh, for any given operation that, that you're looking to do. So what I did was I went ahead and created two shapes. I've got this flat star and I've got this flat disk and what we'll do is we'll run create skin on it and it, what it'll do is it'll bridge the two pieces together. So I've got this facing opposite of this. So they'll become the two end caps of the geometry. Okay, so we'll head over to multiply, extend, more, create skin. And I'm going to go ahead and go full screen so we can see the result. So they bridge together, kind of skinning together. It's also known as lofting. Uh, it's it's a way that we can bridge the two shapes together to create this geometry. Now, what happens if I perform the same operation on uh, the two pieces using the bridge tool? Well, in layer two, I've set up the exact same setup. And what we'll do is flip these so that they're facing each other. And under the construct tab, we can choose bridge. Now, on the surface, it looks like it did the same thing. If I go back and forth, it's very similar. Okay, Some of the points were connected in, in different ways. The difference is there are no end caps. What the bridge tool does is remove those um, end caps. So if you were using the bridge tool and you wanted those end caps, you would need to select those points and hit P for polygon. Select these points and hit P for polygon. And you end up with a very similar result. Okay. Well, what if, what if it wasn't flat geometry? What if we had two 3D pieces of geometry? They were extruded flat pieces. And I selected these two faces and I wanted to skin them. Well, we saw the result of skinning the, the flat shapes. So we pretty much know we need to flip these polygons. And I'm going to come over to the multiply tab and choose create skin. So it bridges those together, except if we look down here, we can see that it has the, the two polygons. They're still there. They still remain. So you would need to, because you really don't want geometry on the inside. It doesn't, it doesn't serve any purpose. Uh, so we would hit delete. If we come over to the next layer, I've got the exact same thing set up and I select these two polygons and we saw with the bridge tool, they should be facing each other. Uh, if we come over to construct and choose bridge, it bridges them together, except there's no extra geometry. Those those faces aren't there. It removes it. So uh, in my opinion, if you're going to bridge 3D shapes together, the bridge tool looks like it could be the option to go with. And if you're going to bridge flat pieces of geomet geometry together, I would suggest to use the create skin tool. Let's look at a couple more examples come over to layer 10 here, I've got a, uh, a pair of subpatched boxes. They're just two boxes, hit tab, we've got uh, subpatches now. And if I select these two polygons and use create skin, it gives me an error. It, it doesn't know what to do with subpatches. Okay, so I'll hit OK, deselect, tab, select the two polygons. Uh, come over to more, create skin. It bridges them, but it actually, you can see the crossing lines here. It, even if I delete these two polygons and hit tab and let me flip these polys, um, it spins them and makes triangles. So we need to go in and merge. I'm just selecting the two triangles and hitting shift Z for merge polygons. Or what I could do, let me undo is select both of them and use what I would suggest is the proper tool for this job, construct, bridge, and now we have the result that we were probably going for in this case. So you'll want to use the bridge tool when working with subpatches. Uh, and there's one more thing I wanted to show, and this is working with uh, curves or splines. So we'll come over to layer three, and let's just create a couple curves and I'm gonna use the drag tool to kind of move those points out and let's use let's do another shape 
select it, T for move, I'll move it back here, copy, paste, and I'll move it here. I'm going to select all of these, copy, paste into a new layer, so that we can come back to those. So I'm going to select all three of these, and let's use create skin on that. So multiply, create skin, and you'll notice that the curves remain. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and cut those. We'll paste those in another layer so we can always use them again. And we'll flip uh, the polygons that are there and go to texture. So in this case, it doesn't put in caps because there were never in caps to begin with. It's the equivalent of extruding a curve. It wouldn't put in caps on there. But we've bridged this together. And uh, we could always select P for polygon, flip, select, P for polygon, and in this case, we don't have to, to flip it, okay? So this is using the Create Skin tool. If we look at the curve and we put the, the shape in the background, we'll see that the, the skinned elements, the bridged polygons that were created, match the shape of the curve. If we select the same splines or the same curves and we use Construct Bridge, now, in this case, uh, it didn't grab that other one. Let's back up. I've got, let's, let's select them one more time to make sure. So I've got this and I'm going to go bridge. As you can see, it's only going to work with the first two curves. Okay. The other thing that you'll notice is we lose the splines. There's no, uh, there's this one because we, we didn't, it didn't take advantage of that one. We use the splines and it didn't give us the smooth curve shape. Right? If we compare the shape in layer 3, it freezes, it converts the spline into polys, and then performs the operation, whereas if we wanted that smooth curve, we would need to select this geometry and hit tab for subpatches to then get the exact same shape that we're getting when we use Create Skin. Okay, So these are just a few examples to to hopefully explain how Create Skin works and when you might want to use it over the bridge tool. But it's good to know that we've got both options and we can use um, the tool that works for the, uh, the operation that we're looking for when creating our model.